To lose weight, whether it's physical or emotional weight, it's about getting in touch with what's going on, being honest with yourself at this very moment in this time, and to be okay with what it is. And then you can make the shift and transform. So it's a lot of levels, but fascia itself, because you can flush toxins, you can flush trauma and tension and stress, your nervous system will be rebalanced, which is so massive in if you want to lose physical or emotional weight. Is the secret sauce to weight loss in the fascia? I 100% believe it is. Because a lot of times we end up overeating or storing emotional energy and toxins, trauma, tension, fear, stress in our connective tissue. And so that the beautiful thing about that is that we have the opportunity to actually shift it with awareness. Because once we know about this system, we can now flush toxins more efficiently. We can clear the stress and the tension that's maybe making us eat more sugar or making us overeat or just like basically eat our feelings, swallow our feelings, right? So we a lot of times will end up carrying extra weight because we're so out of touch. So what I love about fascia is it's the sensory organ. Science is now calling it the sensory organ. It's where we feel everything. And what we need in our society and our culture is to come back to feeling more. And when we can feel, we can heal. Mm. That's the beginning. To lose weight, whether it's physical or emotional weight, it's about getting in touch with what's going on, being honest with yourself at this very moment in this time, and to be okay with what it is. And then you can make the shift and transform. So it's a lot of levels, but fascia itself, because you can flush toxins, you can flush trauma and tension and stress, your nervous system will be rebalanced, which is so massive in if you want to lose physical or emotional weight. It's so funny because what you're saying is upstream stuff. We're not going calories and calories no, out, right? It's the opposite. And we're not we're not looking at all of the things that happen as a result mm. of what's happening in the fascia. These yes. emotional traumas, these yes. physical traumas, stagnation that is in the trauma is causing downstream effects. Yeah. One of the most surprising things I've ever heard is how much sensory tissue is in the fascia mm -hmm. and how it communicates with the nervous system, mm -hmm. right? But then if your nervous system is on hyperdrive, that's telling the body, hold in all of your calories. The world isn't exactly. safe. Exactly. Right? Put a padding around you. Put a padding An actual you. padding that's underneath your skin. And whether that shows up in fat or tissue density that the lymph can't flow through. I mean, it's a really what, what I love about fascia is when you start working with it and healing it and loving it and working with the body, like you're saying, you actually are able to shed whatever is holding you back. You can mm. shed what's in your way of getting what you really desire in your life, whether that's you know a stronger body or just better relationships. When you create that relationship and that shift within your own self by connecting to your sensory organ, the beautiful thing about fascia, this incredible webbing that envelops the entire body, it touches everything. It's a living tapestry right underneath your skin. It's been there all along. It's, it's been speaking to us all along. There's a secret language happening underneath our skin. Some people call it the second skin. I think that's a cool way to visualize it. It's like yeah. this silver skin. You've probably seen that in some of the science lately that they've mm -hmm. recently come out with in the last few years. So there's a lot of cool things where science is now meeting the healing modalities right now in integrative medicine. So it's yeah. a really cool time, which is why I love that you're so into it right now. I love it, the second skin. Uh, yeah, that's that cool love, visual, right? If you think about it, because yeah. that is, I mean, if you look at the textbooks, I remember medicine, I was like, oh, that's yeah. what the fascia looks like, okay? Yeah. But then I'm like reading about fascia, I was like, well, what does it do though? It's still, yeah. science is like, these textbooks are so far behind. Yes, that's it. And then look at, it. looking at the research, there's like bodies Mm -hmm. There's 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 medical bodies that that work to rename the fascia structure and function every year because every year there's new something new that's being figured out. Yes. So we can't even in science <laughs> agree on what the hell fascia is. Exactly. People have different perceptions of it based on what they've learned. A lot of people in the body work field, which is what I'm trained in, is structural integration, which is Ida Rolf's work. Are you familiar with Rolfing? Yeah. 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 For sure. Rolfing's amazing. So, I mean, her work was the thing that just. That, when I signed up to do that program over 10 years ago, I mean, it just changed my life. It actually saved my life through a very stressful time I was going through. Mm -hmm. And um, what I realized is that these people were incredible body workers, decided to actually stop being body workers and go into being scientists mm -hmm. and actually be researchers. And, you know, there's a whole fascial congress now that's been going mm -hmm. on since 2008. So you're right, ever since then, we now know each year, because basically the congress brings together 
the Western medicine doctors and the holistic healers and the body workers and the acupuncturists and people mm -hmm. in all the Ayurveda, and they all come together and they talk about fascia and what can we learn more about it and what, how it can help human health and also help people reach their potential mm -hmm. as a human body. So one of my favorite partners here at Heal Thyself is Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens quite a while ago, maybe about a year ago, because I wanted more energy, but also because I'm running around all the time and sometimes I don't have the time to make a really large, robust salad that I'm gonna be eating. So for over a year, I've been using this as something, especially when I'm on the go, to really help supplement those greens. So the beautiful thing about Athletic Greens is that it doesn't taste super healthy. And what I mean by that is we usually associate these green powders with grassy, earthy tastes, but this has a mild tropical taste, and that's due to the pineapple and vanilla in it. But what is it? So with one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're getting 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens for your stress. You're all out there stressed, I know it. Adaptogens are one of the main things that we need to be taking in every single day. It contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, none of that artificial crap, and it tastes good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, and also your mental clarity during the day and alertness. AG1 is a small micro habit, right? You do it a little bit every single day, but it amounts to benefits over time, and you'll feel it. Here at Heal Thyself, we only partner with brands that are doing something for the world, and Athletic Greens is focused on sustainability. So for one, they are climate-neutral certified company, and in 2020, they purchased carbon credits that support projects protecting old-growth rainforests. Now, additionally, for every purchase, they donate to organizations that help get nutritious foods to kids in need, like No Kid Hungry, right here in the United States. And in 2020, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million meals to kids. All right, so to make it easy, Athletic Greens is gonna give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you gotta do is visit athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Cheers, Athletic Greens. Now, I recently received a question from a listener if it was possible to avoid digestive problems by eating only healthy organic food. Well, I love that thought. I love that line of thought, but it's not always possible. You see, your natural ability to digest food declines with age, but it declines even more when we are stressed throughout the day. And a lot of us, actually the number one thing that people go to the doctors for is stress-related symptoms. A lot of us are really, really constricted and holding in a lot of stress. So this is because the body produces fewer enzymes in this state. And these are the enzymes that are responsible for breaking down the proteins in foods. So even organic food won't provide enough of those enzymes to really properly digest the food, especially when you're stressed. And did you know that as you cook your food more and more, it kills those enzymes? So one of my favorite supplements, it's a high quality enzyme supplement coming from BioOptimizer and it's called the Masszymes. This is the best in class supplement. It's loaded with a full spectrum of enzymes for digesting proteins, starches, sugars, fibers, and fats. Now taking this daily, helps you top off your enzyme levels to replace enzymes that are no longer being produced as you age or when you're stressed. So after you start taking mass enzymes, you may notice you're feeling less bloated, your belly feels flatter after. And if you have a leaky gut, these can help really reduce the inflammation and help you absorb more nutrients. And life is too short to suffer from digestive issues. You know that, you don't wanna be going out to eat all the time and having gut issues for the rest of the night or going to your family's house and having gut issues for the rest of the night, especially as you approach the holiday season. So mass times, super important. I bring them with me to all of these big dinners that I'm going to, to make sure that I'm supported in digesting my food. So for an exclusive offer for you, the Heal Thyself listener, go to masszymes.com slash DRG and use the code DRG10 for a 10% discount. Again, that's www.masszymes.com slash DRG. Use the code DRG10 for 10% off. It's interesting you saying acupuncture reminds me, it's all the same. These yeah, are the meridians, these are the channels that are flowing through the fascia. Mm -hmm. Now, what's flowing through the fascia? 
Ooh, this is a great question. I love it. So now, because of the new way we can see fascia in a living body, you know, back in the day, they would study it in a cadaver mm -hmm. and they would basically throw it away like it was packing wrap and dis disregard it because they didn't realize it was this living system that was actually nourishing ourselves and um, moving energy through the body. So when you ask what's happening is, some people will say that it's the organ that's transmitting consciousness. So it's actually a quantum communication network. It's like messages are going through the body. So it's how our brain talks to our gut, our gut talks to our brain, it's how our heart talks to our brain, our heart talks to our gut. It's how we get the um, chills, the butterflies in our belly when we can't swallow. It's how we feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. It's a, it's a response. It's basically, per, it's perception. It's a perception system in the body where we're feeling what's happening on the outside. So it's um, introception and proprioception. So mm. it's what's happening to you right now as you're sitting here and you're just trying to balance and stand up straight and work with gravity and what's happening to your insides. And this is all happening subconsciously. But when we can enhance the awareness to this, the amount of miracles that can start to happen in your life is profound. And this is what gets me so excited about fascia. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. This, this is exactly the way that I would describe fascia. Yeah. And the, the, the fact that it is the most sensitive piece of tissue in your whole body, yeah. the most sensory organs, mm -hmm. and they go straight to the brain, right where your emotional centers are. That's so right. now we know yes. what you're sensing has an emotional component to it. So. Mm -hmm. Knowing the trauma around you, and you go, whoa, whoa, whoa this isn't safe. Yeah. There's an emotional cue because the fascia is talking. Yeah. And so you said good. quantum. Mm -hmm. And one thing that blew me away learning about fascia was that the communication is faster than the speed of light. Yes, speed isn't that of light. Remarkable. It's crazy because yeah. the nervous system is is mm -hmm. is electric. It is speed of light. Mm -hmm. But my God, we're talking about one whole system, the fascia in the toe and the fascia in the head, within this faster than speed of light, have already communicated before you even knew they communicated. Exactly. Incredible. It's happening all the time. Yeah. And when we can highlight it, it's like why people want to take psychedelics right now because they're opening up different parts of their brain and they're becoming more connected and more present. But you can do that through your feeling sensory organ because the sensory organ is now also being called the sixth sense. Some people call it that, the sixth sense. Like it's actually tuning you in to feeling. And then that's why like getting in touch with your senses in general, like smelling the air or, you know, feeling the air on your skin and just getting that, being more present. That yeah. presence brings you into the feeling again. And then the feeling is also where we can then create more of a, a deeper shift and let go of things mm. more efficiently. So Not hold them and carry them with us. Like for sure, like we do. Yeah. And, 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 you know, talking about this, I think about the emotional release clients I see, right? Yes. And when they're activated in this space somatically, what is, what is signaling and moving and shaking is their fascia, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. For example, there Precisely. was a lady who was infertile, you know, yes. and her and her husband were trying to have the baby for yeah. so long. And she comes in and we're doing this whole process and these layers are peeling. And then mm -hmm. out of nowhere, her right ovary starts spasming. Vibrating. I see it. You can see it. And I put my hand on it and I felt it. Wow. And, and I push on it yeah. and I go, what's the emotion here? What do you feel? Yeah. What, t cut right here, what is the first emotion you think of? She goes, sadness. Oh and then. God. Burst I'm of tears. The chills, by the way, that's my sensory organ. The sensory organ. <laughs> Burst of tears coming from. I go. Wow. Okay, what is the sound that is coming from the ovary out through your voice? Wow. And it was activated, and this crying came from literally her <gasps> ovary. It didn't come from yeah. the chest, and yeah. uh, 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 right. It came from the ovary wow. out, and Deep it was from like the roots. root crying. This was like wow. helplessness crying. Wow. And I, and you know, I told her, I go, listen, I'm gonna be shocked if in two months you and yeah. your husband don't have a baby, right? Because this is this is the problem. The She's blockage. holding so much yeah. emotional blockage mm -hmm. in that area, exactly. and then her other one was activated too. So both ovaries, I'm pressing on them. I'm, I'm literally imagine this dynamic scene. I'm pushing on ovaries. I go, what is the emotion? She goes, sadness. Feel wow. it. What's the sound of it? And it was just going back and forth, and then there was just so much peace. Yeah. So a resonance. A yeah. resonance. So are you a believer that emotion is in the fascia then? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, I mean, energy, emotion is energy in motion. So we want to feel the emotions. We want to embrace them, whether they're good or bad. I think the key is that we don't need to always take them with us and that 
I think emotions can get stuck. Trauma can get stuck in the tissue. Emotions can get stuck in the tissues. And that happens by what you're saying is like kind of cradling it. And it happens in a very subconscious way. It's not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to consciously like clutch my arms into my body because I'm having resentment about someone. That's a big one I see in the ribs. So ribs, a lot of emotional energy can get stuck in the ribs. So you think subconsciously a good example is like, if you're really mad, you don't realize you're doing this, but you're Oh, oh my God! I'm I'm gonna kill that person. I'm right, so upset. You're the grinding ribs. your you're, you're grind, you know you're grinding your teeth. You're locking your jaw, and then you're locking your pelvic floor, and you're locking your diaphragm yeah. and your guts and your organs, and then that is that freeze, right? So that's the frozen energy. And a lot of people are walking around in a sense of, of a state of being frozen all day long, and so that emotional energy cannot flow through us. And mm-hmm. that's what we're coming back to is like flow. We need flow because if we don't have flow, we can come, become congested, which then can lead to inflammation, which as we know, the number one thing that makes people get sick is inflammation. And then the inflammation can lead to disease or illness or ailments or whatnot. So having flow in your body is, I think, the way that people can start to heal and let go of what's happening, maybe in the way we overthink it in our minds. I know not everyone's going to resonate with the body first because some people want to do the mind first, the cerebral yeah. cerebral part. But the body to me is the easiest way in to releasing. I know this is the same. This is your language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you don't know how many times I've had someone say, I've done therapy for 10 years, yes, five years, six years. Yeah. And in mm-hmm. one session, I felt like I just came back to myself. Right. Yeah. In the second session, all of those pieces that therapy has been trying to address, is gone, like forever. I'm talking about gone, forever gone. Why? It's because the body is a somatic conscious consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different consciousness than the cerebral, egoic. Let's make sense of all of these things. Let's do a timeline. Oh, and now because I, through years of therapy, I found out the moment it happened, well, what does that change? What about your body? If you still feel the resentment of anger and the experience of the trauma, what is you knowing or not knowing it? And this is why I tell people, I was like, you don't need to really know it, you need to feel it. Mm-hmm. If you feel it, you're going to heal it, but you don't need to know it. You don't need to remember it. And they go, mm-hmm. really? Because people are egos. We need concept. We need yep. stories. We need definition. But the biggest healing I've seen is in those moments where the fascia, and you just know the fascia is being liberated. It's under my yeah, fingers. Liberation. It's moving. I love that word. That's perfect. <sighs> moving. Yes. So what I actually find is when the energy of the fascia, when it's moving, mm-hmm. comes out and the voice is so important. Yeah. So Actually, when I put these myofascial release balls on my, my stomach, yeah, because I hold the most amount of fascial tension there, mm. and oh my god, you have to hear me. I'm like, oh, yeah, same. I know. Like I'm, I'm like screaming so borderline, you know? I know. But I tell you right mm-hmm. now, after I'm done, it is like it, it's just bliss. It's my body's like, yeah. Oh, thank well, that's you. when you're in the gut. You're working with the vagus nerve, yeah, and that's the master nerve to the nervous system. You know about mm-hmm. this, but the belly work also has so much lymph too. And a lot of people don't realize that if they have, you know, a bigger gut, it can be actually a lot of emotional energy and lymph that's stuck in the gut too. So Mm. releasing that helps with so many levels of wellness in general, and also opening up the diaphragm. I've been working with like doing some hands-on diaphragm work where you're just like putting your fingers in there and like what I, you know, you probably do that on the table all the time, but people can do that to themselves. I realize like you don't have to go to a practitioner you know, to do that, but you can, if you, and that actually helps you get more in tune with your body and feel your body and get to know your anatomy a little more and what's happening. Like, I love that you're pushing on the organs. Like people get afraid of like, oh, I can't put pressure on my organs. They're fixed. I'm like, no, your organs, they want to be wrung out. They mm. want to be twisted. They want pressure. I mean, mm. with obviously, right, you have to sure, have knowledge. Sure. My dad calls it educated intuition. Like you <laughs> want to have that knowledge, know what you're doing, but also intuit it as well. So, mm. but like getting in there and feeling your body a little more, it's very much about then working with the body than against it. And I lo- that's what I love about the fascia movement right now is that so much in fitness, especially, or even wellness, maybe back in the day, like, oh, you just like work harder, burn more calories, starve yourself, deprive yourself. And guess what that does? Locks you up more, locks up your jaw, locks up your diaphragm, locks up your pelvic floor, your head. So all your juices are getting stagnant and they're not flowing. So like working with the fascia is working with the body rather than against it and getting in there and getting to know your body again. Mm -hmm. Because people are quite out of touch with 
their body and their anatomy. I mean, I'm completely obsessed with learning about the body, probably like you. Mm -hmm. But I think if more people just knew the simple things. The simple you know? things, yeah. It's like nutrition, like we want to know simple things about eating well. And it's a big difference when you're moving uphill with all of these things you have to do. Yes, and your Starve list yourself. gets so much longer and okay. you feel so yeah. out of touch. And then it's not sustainable. Yeah. And whereas if you're working with your fascia, you feel better first and foremost. You go, yes. oh my God, I'm like mentally better. <laughs> totally. Of course, and then that opens up more space to do the things even more you need to do, right? Like, yeah. it, it, one thing that people are, are not realizing is if you have a poor relationship with food, there's an emotional component. Yep. If the emotional component's stuck in the body, you have to move it. Mm -hmm. So it stands to believe fascia should be number one before you even go start dieting and do these first. Thank you. Heal the I love emotion you. Behind the food, right? <laughs> you get it. Yeah. And this totally. is and is this what you see when you work with people and in yep. and, and, and your whole career? There's the big emotional component to food. Yep. So in my early part of my career, when I first was learning about structural integration and fascia and kind of bridging this whole thing with Pilates and fascia, so doing like, we call it movement medicine. I know that's not my term, but it's a great way to kind of encapsulate all the different modalities coming together. So you're, again, working with the body and nourishing it through movement, through breath work, and the benefits that you would see, my first book was called Taller, Slimmer, Younger. And I got a little pushback because it's quite aesthetic, right? But again, People were inspired by that title because who doesn't want to have better posture? Who doesn't want to feel more supple and youthful? And who doesn't want to, you know, maybe be a little slimmer, yeah. right? So, and those were the three words that when I was seeing clients, like I'd see like eight or 10 clients a day in my early part of my career when I was working with a lot of pro athletes and celebrities. And I mean, I would say to them, can you just tell me like the three things that you felt from doing this work? And they'd be like, oh my God, I feel taller. I feel slimmer. I was working with this amazing hockey player who was, he plays on the, or he was playing on the Kings at the time. And actually that year he, they won the cup. It was mm -hmm. so fun. We got to go see him win, but he lost like, I think two pants sizes and he had to get all of his clothes altered. And he was like, Lo, I'm going to send you the Taylor bills because you basically made me. And he was so happy though, too, because he was like more juicy. He could breathe better. His VO2 intake was better because his diaphragm was more open. His digestion completely changed. His ability to deal with stress completely transformed. So, and that's a guy, but the women, it's incredible because women, we tend to hold a lot more emotional energy around our hips. Mm -hmm. And that's why like cellulite can build up more and lymph blockages and a weakened connective tissue. So that was another thing why I think my work kind of got out there when it did, because people were like, whoa, there's this amazing aesthetic benefit. But the exciting thing for me now is you have the aesthetic meeting the mental, emotional, and now you have this, you have both. Yeah. Why not? We want to, we, who doesn't want to look better and, and feel, feel better. better? Yeah. You know? Yeah, And for stay sure. juicy, like through your life. Because yeah. as we, I think aging is a form of dehydration. Mm -hmm. So we're dehydrating. And how do we get juicy? by working with our fascia. And our fascia loves to be hydrated. It's and true. movement medicine or body work or all the things that we love. I mean, I have a whole list of those we can talk about, but that's how we stay juicy and vibrant and we keep the flow going, the chi, the energy, the life force energy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's undeniable that we, what, what's, how are we moving through our lives? There's something that's making us be who we are. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for it's sure. It's undeniable. It's undeniable and it's there. and. We sort of sense it, and I'm so happy that now there's practices where people are looking at things like weight loss or just mental health. Yes. And it can do with body work and the bridge with your mind. Because yeah. so so many times we've got lost that we have to sit in a chair and talk about our problems versus just like roll out our problems or totally. feel, allow them to move, right? And Or have an emotional release, however it works. But yeah, the one thing that, that uh, and talking about fascia actually, there there's actually a, a theory in, oncology that mm. a healthy fascia yeah. will not let a tumor metastasize because they yes, say it's like quicksand. I've, I've just recently seen that research. Yeah, so they say it's like quicksand where it doesn't metastasize because yeah. it's a hydrated, healthy, supple, engorged, blood-flowed mm -hmm. fascia where juicy, as you said, yeah. it's able to move uh, it's across the muscles. It's the congestion yeah. that leads to, I think we all have cancer cells in our body. I yeah, really I do. do. I believe do. that we mm -hmm. are walking around with them, but it's when our immune system goes down and we get into an inflammatory state and then we are not having the flow, we have the congestion, then that's when things can like take over. Because if you really think about what cancer is, it is an autoimmune disease. It's the body fighting itself. 
it's not like something that's happening. Like if you're really looking at it from a holistic yeah. perspective, maybe not every doctor would agree with that. But yeah. in a way, you can think of it like if you're if you have that congestion, that inflammation, you're more susceptible, and then that thing can pop up and take over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, my mom died of breast cancer. So it's like, for me, I, she was diagnosed when I was 16, which is why I'm doing this work. It's why I'm on this path. I, I learned this path. I learned that I was gonna be on this path of wellness, holistic wellness, at that age. Mm, it was powerful. quite early. Early on. I know, I was like, man, I, got, I don't really have a choice. It's like, I have no free will here. I'm gonna just, I'm on this path. Yeah. But I also love it, and I'm so passionate, and I'm so grateful to be able to bring it to more people. My mom died of breast cancer, too, when I was in school. Yeah, so that's what led me into oncology and the emotional component, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so I know, Aww, I know the whole know. thing about the, the, wow. the whole process, but. And the heart, right? So the, the heart, heart, breast cancer, a lot of people in the, um, I guess, holistic wellness, you know, I mean, it's a broken heart, it's resentment, a lot of emotional energy that lives in the heart, and that's the stagnant energy. Mm -hmm, the stagnant energy. Yeah. I've actually been finding a lot in my clients, there's a big component to uh, shame around sexuality for breast cancer. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Not accepting your feminine yes. or masculine sexuality of who you are wow. authentically sexually, however that yeah. looks, aside from religion or cultural, who are you sexually? Because we're so wow. disconnected with our sexuality, and I find that in breast cancer patients, it's pretty common. And I, and yeah, I, and, and then I, I could totally see that. Yeah, so just pay attention when you see breast cancer yeah. patients. Ask them about their sexuality. Ask them about fascial shame in the yes. womb and the ovaries, right, in this whole like yeah. band area. And you'll notice that they just may just be frozen and coming back to it is a, is mm. a powerful, if anything, powerful way to be a healthier person, but really possibly in the cancer realm too. This is the work yeah. that I've been really looking into. I have a bunch of wow. case studies that I'm looking at for That's the shame component. But yeah, the heart, the grief, it's all in the area. Yeah. But think about it, it's the organ, right? It's not only a sexual organ, but it's also giving birth and, and giving milk, right? Yes, it is. So really important. The uh, sexuality thing is a big piece. I My second book was actually, it's called The Power Source, and it's all about the pelvic floor and how the pelvic floor, because I was doing these sessions on people hands-on and doing a lot of like pelvic floor work. And I was seeing these incredible results, like way more connection to their core. I was working with um, LeBron James at the time and I was doing pelvic floor with, work with him. And he was like, I can jump higher. I can like, <laughs> my hips are more mobile and flexible. I can recover quicker. Yeah. So I was like, I gotta write a book about this. So I wrote a book about this. And one of the things we talked a lot about was how that energy down here in the root, in the pelvic floor is sexual energy or whatever you want to call it, but sexual energy is about like your libido and your libido is not just about sex. It's about connection, charisma, creativity. creativity. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Curiosity, connection. I mean, a lot of Cs. But um, yeah, it's, it's a powerful area of the body that we either, I think in our culture, we have until people like you that are bringing it to the light. We've been either all or nothing. So it's all either nothing. nothing, so you lock it up, it doesn't exist, and you're just like super uptight and rigid and clutching it, and then that creates tension. In fa fascially, there's a fascial plane from the pelvic floor up to the jaw. So there, I mean, you're, if you're tight in your pelvic floor, you're tight in your jaw, and then you're, that energy isn't flowing. You're probably not speaking your truth as much. You're feeling more of that kind of all or nothing. So it's either nothing, lockdown, or porn. Right. You know, like obsession. Locked up or obsession, period. It's like, so where's the in between? This is where the we flow. need to find. Where's, Where's the, the flow? flow? Now, I know you heard me talk about New Zest plant-based protein powder before. It's a constant recommendation here at Heal Thyself. Let me tell you why. Other protein powders, they're not fully tested, nor are they transparent. New Zest regularly tests for gluten, dairy, soy, heavy metals, and all those other ingredients that I normally tell you to stay away from. And what I love most about the company is that they share their independent testing results and they provide documents for all of their products in their whole line. And it's important for you to know what's going on in your body, especially if you're using this every single day and you're giving it to your kids. So protein powders are a great way to provide the building blocks for vitality and support for your overall muscle health and just overall health. Now, New Zest is easy on the stomach and highly digestible. And it has none of the common allergens that affect us when we take conventional protein powders. Whenever I review protein powders, New Zest consistently makes my top three. The peas that they use are grown in northern France and they're processed in Belgium and they use a patented water-based technology, making New Zest one of the highest grade proteins out there, period. So for the Heal Thyself listener, you're gonna get 20% on New Zest by going to newzest.us 
slash heal thyself. Once again, that's N-U-Z-E-S-T dot U-S slash H-E-A-L-T-H-Y-S-E-L-F. Or you can go to the website and just use the coupon code heal thyself, one word, for the same 20% off. I love that we, we talked about that um, because I find that that's one of the most locked up energies. Totally. A lot of anger in women, who it's locked up because of society, a lot of sadness in men because of society. Yeah. But both, I see a locked up sexuality and I'm like, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. when, when, I mean, I've, I, on the table, I've had multiple women have, when that is released, orgasms right on the table. I'm just watching it happen. I was like, That's okay, amazing. there's your womanhood. There, there, there it is. Go. There's your creativity. Totally. There's your femininity just being unlocked yeah. when the fascia was unlocked. Wow. And, and I'm watching this and I go, this is the craziest thing I've probably ever seen. That is just, brilliant. Just the energy flowing. Right. The liberation, you use that word. That's the perfect way to explain it. And then when you have that liberation, it doesn't just, it's not right then and there. It's you're going to take that with you for the rest of your life. Right. Because once you feel it and you are able to access it, there is no going back. Mm. I mean, I feel like, you know, I, I my, and again, for my, my first book was The Taller, Slimmer, Younger. I got people on the foam roller. So that was like the thing that kind of put me out there in the media. And it was great because if you lay on a foam roller the first time you feel it, you're like, I feel that. Like, and it feels yeah. good no matter yeah. who you are, yeah. what age you are, it doesn't matter. Like, you're wow. And so it's just getting back to that feeling. If you can get people to feel a little bit more pleasure and rolling themselves out and then getting them to like, oh, like I can move my hips and then I can touch my body. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, getting them to the sexuality thing because it's like hard because people are so in the, I guess, old belief system. Yeah. Paradigm. Paradigm. So this sounds all great. Right, yeah, yeah. but let's say, what if, okay? What if someone's foam rolls or they yep. do the rolfing? Mm -hmm. uh, what about the next day? Is it just going to go back to how it was? Well, that's a great question. Actually, perfect because I do believe, similar to exfoliating your face or your skin or brushing your teeth or flossing your teeth, it needs to be done daily because we, as human beings, we cannot avoid stress. There is going to be stressful things that we go through you know, riding the waves of life. So how do we get better at metabolizing that stress? Because stress is actually good because it builds resilience. It's when the stress gets stuck and we're not moving it through is when it brings us down and makes us feel heavier and more dense and more stuck. So we're all gonna have stress. So we do need to practice, I call it like a daily stress hygiene, daily, pro it's a daily like internal exfoliation or an internal flossing, like a fascia flossing. Mm -hmm. There's even a, a someone that calls it fascia flossing, I think. But I believe that it does need to be done every day. But then when, when you do it every day, it gets easier. It gets, there's a uh, shampoo effect. Mm. So the more you do it regularly, and I'm not talking about doing it for an hour a day. I'm talking, I have this thing called the five minute fascia flow. It's like you get outside on the earth, you get the electromagnetic, electromagnetic magnetic. energy from the earth. You get natural light from the sun. So those two things are actually, I mean, I would consider them fascia foods. I have a whole fascia food system too, but they are feeding your connective tissue because our connective tissue is made out of collagen, elastin, and there's a water shell, a structured water shell that wraps around the fascial fibroblast. And what recharges our body battery is when we stand in the earth and we get the natural light from the sun and then we move and we breathe those are things that don't cost anything. Again, awareness. So because of the water shell around the liquid crystal, the fascial matrix, that's where, think of like if you put your hair dryer in a bathtub, what would happen? You'd be electrocuted, yeah. right? So essentially, because the water shell around the fascial matrix, that's how electricity goes through it. Uh -huh. So that's how the energy moves, whether that's consciousness or, you know, things that are happening from your brain to your gut. That's just a good way to explain it. Yeah. I mean, it's happening all throughout your body, the perception of what's happening on the outside to what's happening on the inside. Mm. So the water shell is pretty powerful because it does, um, it actually initiates that el electricity through the body. Mm. So there, have you heard about this water thing, the structured water thing? Yeah. Yeah, How I just the watched a video phase? yesterday on structured water and this guy yeah. had berries. Pollock? Uh, it might have been. From uh, University of Washington. There's some great new research that he's done. Yeah, he's had, well, he, this was the experiment he did. He put berries in, in water for seven years. Oh, wow. Structured water and tap water. 
And oh the tap water gosh. was all moldy and gross, and the berries were just degraded and, and you know, old. Wow. And then the, uh, the, the structured water was clear, and the berries were alive. Yeah, and so for it's seven more years, organized. Yeah, more organized. Hence structured, right? Structure. It's more organized water. But the way it works with the fascia is it's more of a gelatinous water. So it's not like your regular water that's flowing. It's not ice. It's not vapor. It's this gelatinous, almost like a hyaluronic acid gel that actually holds the, um, the fibroblasts of the collagen fibers. Mm -hmm. It wraps around it. It's really cool. I wish I had an image to show you, but I'll send you one. <laughs> yeah, but if, if we think about it that way, right? Like, not only is there the water that's connecting them, they're connected in general. Yeah. It's, so it's like, it's not just one cell and then some space in another cell. It's a, it's a sheath of cells just yeah. acting as one with water just flowing and yeah. electricity come flowing. That's why it's electromagnetic. Yeah. Because it's just exactly. like snap of the finger. Um, when it comes to, you know, one of the most fascinating things that I learned was that the fascia can anticipate a trauma before the trauma happens. Oh, I think I heard you say this recently. This was the craziest thing. That's in animals the and humans. Right? Yeah. So this is intuition, right? Yeah. This is in animals and humans. It, it, it's, 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 if it has the memory or the sixth sense, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. of the surrounding that it can sense, and it's already transmitting the signals of quote unquote danger yeah. before it's even there. This is yeah. why sometimes we like go to a place and we go, I don't know, I just feel like anxious here. There's something already there that reminded your body that yes. it's not safe. You might have seen a person, you might have smelled mm -hmm. a scent, you might have heard a noise. Isn't that crazy that the fascia it's is like... remarkable. So through the other senses coming through the other into senses. the... Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. to think, it's like, okay, if all of that is implicated, of course there's an emotional component to weight loss. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, how could it not, right? How can it not? And why not go that way rather than the other way? That's way, way more going against your body and your rhythms. Because I believe also that so many people are out of balance because they've been in the, you know, go, 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 the sympathetic nervous system. They haven't even, even when they're sleeping, they're still like kind of wound up. So now I feel like people are realizing that, oh, if I actually work with my nervous system and I create more balance, it's not about being like always like chilling, like doing nothing all the time. Right. It's about the balance of the masculine and the feminine energies, the doing and the being, the force and the flow. And like sometimes we have to get up and make things happen, but sometimes we can also let it actually just happen too. Mm. Like let the integration happen. So we need to do, but we also need to be. And we need to like push, and then we need to surrender and allow and become more of a, I mean, I believe a, a, an attractor. Yeah. You know, when you create the space in your body, in your life, you end up allowing the space to open up for other things. So sometimes when you say no to something, you're actually saying yes to something way better. Right. I love it's that. It's powerful. I love that. It is powerful. So yeah. what, all right, so people viewing and listening, they go, okay, I get it. Fascia's in your body. It is your body. It's yeah. transmitting these signals. Yeah. I get it. There's emotion to weight loss. Mm -hmm. What can we do now? What, what practices can we do to feel better in our bodies starting today after this interview? Oh my gosh, I love that you asked this question because I literally have been working with like the practical side of how can you like, well, I guess it is put it into action and start to embody it. So like a lot of things I think in wellness and life coaching and, you know, self-help, like it's a lot of like cerebral, like you understand it and you get it, but like, are you able to put it into action to actually do something to feel the shift? And so I've spent the last 20 years basically studying all of this and I've now created this online studio called the Align Life Studio. And it's essentially where I put all of my information and my knowledge into basically flows, fascia flows, mm -hmm. rolling flows, rebounding, breath work, meditation. So I have a whole system that's available for people anywhere in the world. We're streaming in over 50 countries, which is kind of cool. But basically all it is, is, is learning again. I do a lot of education about the organs, about how the body wants to move, about what's happening to your body. Why are we doing this? How is this improving digestion, getting rid of bloating, helping you calm your nervous system, you know, get the cerebral spinal fluid flowing through your body. So through rolling, using body rolling tools, doing body work. Yeah. Um, you know, work. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of using the rebounder, the mini trampoline, even for like three minutes, five minutes. It really helps the lymph flush through and the energy to move. And it also gives every cell of your body a massage. So using the 
the trampoline is, I mean, there's a lot of research and science on mm -hmm, it too. Mm -hmm. So I've, I, I think that rolling and rebounding together, if you have time to do anything, it's a perfect combo. But if you don't have a rebounder, you can just jump. You can just yeah. bounce. Yeah. Bouncing, um, humming, chanting, laughing, hugging. These are all the things that help your nervous system, which then helps your fascial system as well. Red light therapy is really powerful for the connective tissue because it's helping regenerate the collagen mm -hmm. and decreasing inflammation. I know this is your language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, um, and then also um, sound healing. Sound healing is an incredibly powerful um, modality, I believe, for what we need in the world, which is this collective healing, because it helps vibrate and bring your brain waves into a different state so that you can be more still and then shake it out. So shaking, quivering, humming, yeah, dancing, somatic movements, intuitive movements, you know, getting up just throughout your day and just doing a few of these, like head neck rolls. Like it's this constant like kind of, what is your body? Oh, I'm feeling this in my back right now. I'm right. feeling this in my jaw. So again, it's like listening. I say listen to the whispers so you don't have to hear the screams, you know? Right. So keeping that motion in the cells. Motion is lotion. Keeping the body flowing and free throughout the day. It doesn't have to be like a crazy, like I'm going to spend an hour doing this. Mm -hmm. It's like throughout the day. Check in. Every few hours, just check in. How's it feeling? How are you feeling? Mm. How are you feeling right now as you're sitting here? Are you feeling equal weight on your sits bones? Are you feeling your shoulders and your ears? These little things, I mean, I'm a, such a feeler. I'm just a kinesthetic person. It's like, it is my, I guess, blessing and curse, because I feel everything, you know? But I feel like if people could feel a little bit more, then they could probably release a lot more. Yeah. For sure. You know? I mean, is what I tell people again, your bodies to feel. I right? I'd have them do the scanning meditation again, their bodies to feel. Yes. So you can't you can't heal if you can't feel, period. Totally. Right? And we run away from feeling by just going on our phones or typing on our yeah. computers or getting on calls. And yep. all of a sudden, at the end of the day, we, our, sh our shoulders are right next to our ears and <laughs> we're know. stiff as a board, right? And yes. you, you mentioned lymph. Yes. Okay? And, and it's a big I, one. I, we can't end this interview without not talking about lymph. No. Lymph is big. Why is it so important for you? And what role does the fascia play with lymph? Well, fascia encases the lymphatic system and the nerves, the nervous system. They're actually like, if you picture like this kind of cotton, cotton candy webbing spider web, the lymph nodes are in that webbing and so are the nerves and the glands as well. So it actually can affect the endocrine system. And this is why I think it's exciting what you're reading about cancer too, mm -hmm. because... That all goes back to, I mean, the master system in the body is the nervous system, right? So that's why we need to know the nervous system, but the lymph is obviously the garbage disposal of the body. It carries out the waste and it needs assistance. The only way it works is through movement. It's, it needs an actual, doesn't have a natural pump like the heart, yeah. you know, can pump the blood. It needs assistance. So the assistance that we do, inversions, twisting, walking, um, all the things that I do in the with the rebounder, phenomenal bouncing, jumping, breath work, getting the diaphragm. The diaphragm to me is like one of the best ways you can get the lymph going because we have so much lymph in our gut, right? So the diaphragm is, I know you know this, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's this dome-shaped muscle, right? It's a pump. It basically, every time you breathe in, it pumps down into your organs. Your organs drop down into your pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor opens and expands. And then as you exhale, the pelvic floor closes, pushes up into the organs, pushes up into the lungs, and then flushes out the CO2. This is happening subconsciously, but if you know it's happening, you can enhance it. Mm. And that's also what pumps the cerebral spinal fluid from the brain, or from the pelvis up to the brain, which feeds the brain nutrients and then flushes the brain of toxins as well. So in the spinal cord, the cerebral spinal fluid is another kind of lymph system. I look at it like that. It's another flowing system that needs help keep it flowing. So you've mm -hmm. got the cerebral spinal fluid and then you have the lymph system and the lymph system is something that if you want to flush fat, um, lose weight, get rid of bloating, then you really got to work with the lymph system. And it's also great for, again, like preventing cancer yeah. and getting the flow. Yeah, yeah. So I love that idea that it's, those nodes are actually in the fascia. Mm -hmm. So you can do light lymph work, but I prefer like a little bit more of that deep work that we get from body work or using the roller or you know going upside down is phenomenal for that mm. as well. And jumping and rebounding. Yeah, all and that all good things. stuff. Getting outside on the earth. Yeah, yeah. which is, uh, grounding was like one of my first things that I spoke about as a doctor. I really? Remember. Yeah, so I'm like There's the a great science fan. about it, right? I did a show on all the science of grounding. It's like, oh my gosh, it's, I have to it's watch powerful, that. it's okay. beautiful. But um, 
Okay, so we know about all this stuff. Yep. All the viewers and listeners who go, I really love her, and I gotta follow her, <laughs> and I gotta download all the things. Where do we do this? Well, the Align Life Studio is definitely my spot. It's a website. Um, it's a virtual wellness center that you can access anywhere in the world um, for a really good value. It's not very expensive. And essentially, we use a few very inexpensive tools, like the rolling tools. The most expensive tool is the rebounder, but you don't need the rebounder to get the benefits. You can use a jump rope, or you can just go outside on the earth, on the grass, or the sand, and just you know jump on the earth, because that gives a little bit of that bounce. But the rebounder is just great, because it helps regenerate the pelvic floor, and it does help with the lymph more than you know regular walking. So. Mm. I love yeah. that. And they could find you on the Align Life Studio. Yeah, the Align Life Studio or my Instagram, just Low Roxbra. Okay. Yeah. And what are your books? What was the name of them? So oh, I have, well, I have a new book coming out that I'm writing right now called The Fascia Formula. Mm. And that's going to be, I think you'll love that one because it's basically about getting people to feel and then to flush the fascia and then to do the flows, like the actual like fascia flows movement medicine. And then it's feed. So it's it's actually five things. Feed is like about how you can how you nourish your yeah. fascia through food. So we just launched an entire new fascia food website with all these great recipes, and then also um, flourish. So it's five things, and it's actually a cycle because as we know, everything ebbs and flows, right? So we're constantly we come to flourish, then we got to feel again because yeah. that's it. It's a constant thing that we're you know it's we're all a work in progress. Yeah. We never just like have it all figured out. Well. We did have some stuff figured out today, and it's the fascia <laughs> stuff. So yes. thank you for coming to the show, talking about fascia, giving us your insight all the way from New Zealand, over here My in California. Honor. What a gift to see you face to face. And everyone listening and viewing, go check out all those resources. <laughs> if I'm telling you right now, start with the fascia. If, you're, yes. if you have no idea where to start with weight loss, with your emotions, start with the fascia, get familiar with it, start giving it some love, mm -hmm. and see your life change. Aw, All right, amazing. thank you. Thank you. Okay, so people love tattoos. They really do. It's a staple of our culture, not just in American culture, but around the world. Shit, I have 10 or 11. I got addicted to them when I was younger because they were my form of self-expression to whatever stage of life I was in. When you get that first tattoo, you feel like kind of a badass, right? You want to show it off everywhere you go. You just happen to expose it with all the clothes that you're wearing and everyone wants to see it. It's an experience in itself, and I know that feeling. And apparently a lot of Americans do too. 67% of American adults don't have any tattoos, while 21% have two or more tattoos. That's one in five folks. 50 million people and increasing. So why do people even get tattoos? There was a study by the University of the Free State in South Africa, and they interviewed a bunch of college students as to why they would choose to get or not get a tattoo, as well as what their perceptions surrounding the practice of tattooing is. And as summarized by Dr. Vinita Mehta, 47% of people responded positively and 50% responded negatively. The primary motivation for people who got tattoos had to do with their personal meaning to it, 25%, such as the mark was a significant experience or struggle to represent in their life. Participants also reported to keep my mother's memory, a way of honoring my first child. I wanted to get this when I was going through something in my life. And some participants, 12% or so, also felt their tattoos were an extension of the expression of who they were. And that is more so um, my defining reason why I did it. One respondent marked, my body is my book, my tattoos is my story, which I can actually align with. Some participants also reported that they found tattoos to be an appealing form of art. 11% said no tattoos because of religious restriction, 10% they were worried about the permanence of it, and 10% had medical or fear of needles. Now, that might not be a surprise. Uh, and we know that many people get tattoos. But here's something I notice in these respondents, and even in these questions, that no one was asking. What about the health effects of tattoos, of the ink? And there are, and you may suspect this or not, many issues at hand. And I assure you, it pains me every time I talk about it, because when I dive back in the research or someone asks me about tattoos, I cringe internally because I have so many. And I had this really cool celeb, like one of the top artists on Instagram, they said, hey, I want to come, I'm going to be in LA, I want to give you a tattoo. And it took everything in me, because it's the most beautiful art I've seen on skin, to say no. And I said no because I did so much research in the years before that, 
from my last tattoo till that offer, where, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it again. Um, and I say that because I want you all to know what's going on with tattoos. So here are my top reasons why you shouldn't get a tattoo. Now, this is not an order of importance, but these are all very, very important points. Number one, poor restriction and regulation. The regulation is terrible. It's worse than the cosmetics market. There are rules relating to this field that are controlled independently by each state, right? So the rules are not federal, it's state to state. So it differs wherever you are. Okay, the FDA is well aware that there are health risks to tattoos, we know this. In a study called Tattooed Skin and Health, published in the Current Problems in Dermatology Journal, they highlight that to many people's surprise, tattoo shop restrictions are abysmal. They're not required for any oversight by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. It's a regulatory federal authority that outlines safety and health standards for employees in contact with toxic or hazardous substances. So that's a big problem in itself because there's no federal mandate about how artists and tattoo shops have to approach their work. But just as bad, if not worse, is that Tattoo Inc. falls into the same loophole as cosmetics. This means that Tattoo Inc. is not FDA approved. Now, as a side note, not that that means much, because when people mention the FDA, I think of blind turtles on Xanax looking for the nearest corrupt paper to sign. But still though, there's significance in understanding tattoo regulation. FDA does actually have the power to regulate Tattoo Inc., but they don't. Why? Well, based on the aforementioned article, it's due to competing health priorities and a lack of evidence. Well, that's just not true. There's a lot of evidence out there that Tattoo Inc. isn't safe to put in human body, which I'll go into later. But Tattoo Inc. has been classified as cosmetics and not regulated before going to market. I'm gonna repeat that. Tattoo Inc. is not regulated before going to market. This is a major loophole and yet another airball by the FDA. Number two, Tattoo Inc. is toxic. This ink is coming from the painting and printing industry. Now we know that the FDA dropped the ball on Tattoo Inc. safety and regulation because they say there's not enough evidence, but let me share with you the evidence. So a study appropriately called Determination of Heavy Metals in Tattoo Inc. in the Journal of Biosciences, Biotechnology, and Research in Asia, they tested lead, cadmium, zinc levels in 100 samples of 12 different permanent makeup ink tattoo brands in different available colors, and they were randomly purchased. And the colors were black, white, yellow, brown, red, and green. And all the tattoo ink samples monitored in the study contained detectable levels of lead and cadmium. So a quote from the article, cadmium contents in all group colors in Chinese and USA brand samples was much higher than the maximum limited 0.2 milligrams per kilogram set by the EPA at the highest one related to the white color of 2.1473 milligrams per kilogram. In the black and white color, the highest and lowest levels of lead were observed respectively. White, yellow, orange ink samples shown to have the highest level of zinc. What does this all mean? Well, lead is a problem. It's a big problem. It's a neurotoxin. For children, it creates behavioral changes, learning disabilities for adults. It creates cognitive changes, memory and mood changes, and blood pressure dysfunction builds up in the kidneys, it builds up in the bones. It's a probable carcinogen in humans, meaning it causes cancer, probably. Cadmium causes cancer and targets the body's cardiovascular, renal, gastrointestinal, neurological, reproductive, and respiratory systems. And zinc, although they sell it at the supplement store when you take too much, can cause flu-like symptoms of metal fume fever, which causes stomach and intestinal disturbances and liver dysfunction. And now another study called Metal Toxicity, Tattoos, Safe Symbols, in the Environmental Health Perspective Journal, Really nice quote by them. Titanium and aluminum are often used as colorants in tattoos. More worrisome, inks using non-metal colorants may include traces of antimony, arsenic, beryllium, chromium, cobalt, lead, nickel, and selenium. Now the author says the ink used in a three by five inch tattoo contains one to 23 micrograms of lead versus 0.5 micrograms per day permitted under Proposition 65 in California. A lot more lead in a three to five inch tattoo than is, than is allowed in California. They also have mercury, copper, thallium. In the heavy metal show, you heard me talk so much about heavy metals from top to bottom, and they're notorious for wreaking havoc on the body. They create dysfunction, they bioaccumulate in the organs. You don't just take them in and piss them out, right? The thing about heavy metals is they bioaccumulate in the brain, the thyroid, the kidney, the lungs, the bone, and the heart. 
They actually displace minerals in the body, all the good minerals that your body needs. They're implicated in hormonal, nervous disruption, immune suppression, DNA damage, digestive dysfunction, cardiometabolic disease, and reproductive dysfunction. There are also some other worrisome ingredients like carbon black, which has an affinity for the lungs and lung disease, titanium dioxide, which I spoke so much about with tampons, they can cause a lot of respiratory issues too. There are also azo dyes in there. They're carcinogenic, they cause cancer because their cleaved product is benzidine. And this is directly connected to bladder cancer, and this was actually part of my med school thesis. Chemicals like formaldehyde we know are carcinogenic are in tattoo ink. HCBD, hexachlorobutadiene, is persistent and bioaccumulates, especially in the liver. It also causes reproductive, genetic, and it's a potential carcinogen to all organisms, right? They also have polyaromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs. This is what happens when we cook meat on the grill uh, and we put sauce and, 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 it's, and it's mixing with the high temperature, all of the charring contains this chemical that's really bad for you, and that's in tattoo ink. So I said a lot, but overall, the cells are now subject to toxicity. Enzymes in the cells are now subject to disruption, so the function of the cell isn't correct. Genotoxicity, this is when the DNA of the cell is subject to uh, free radicals created by tattoo inflammation that can cause cancer. And it's throwing a monkey wrench on the production of energy in the body. It can cause skin issues, or the whole spectrum of it, all the way up to autoimmune disease. And we know many of these ingredients are carcinogenic that cause cancer. Number three, so the old belief in the tattoo industry was that you get your tattoo and all those nasties that are stuck are going to be within the dermis. They're gonna be contained. But now research is finding that they move to the lymph nodes. This means that they're traveling out of the dermis, into the system, into the lymphatics. And trust me, even saying that makes me cringe again, thinking about it. Uh, but this phenomenon has been known for quite a while in oncology and diagnostic imaging circles because when women are getting their uh, yearly mammos and there's an abnormal reading in the lymph nodes, there are studies out there that saying, don't confuse the suspicion of cancer with tattoo ink in the lymph nodes. So we've seen this already. And this shows me that if this is moving systemically, then the tattoo ink can create a range of downstream effects, as I just mentioned, the skin issues, the immune dysfunction, the inflammation, and yes, possibly cancer. Which leads me to number four, tattoos and cancer. When you Google tattoos and cancer, one of the first hits you get is from cancer.org. And this is a leader in conventional cancer info online. And they have a really good quote. We are not aware of a reported cancer case directly attributable to tattooing. However, evidence does show that some tattoo ink contains carcinogens, cancer-causing substances, chemicals that have been classified as known or possibly carcinogenic by the World Health Organization's International Agency of Research on Cancer, and subsequently a 2016 report from the Australian government's Department of Health and the National Industrial Chemical Notification and Assessment Scheme. They looked into the composition of 49 tattoo inks and found a mismatch between the content and the labeling, as well as a concern for some of the components that I mentioned before, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the PHs. These are chemicals that are known carcinogens, and they were found in a fifth of the samples tested, and 83% of the black inks tested. Other hazardous components include barium, copper, mercury, amines, and various colorants. In order to achieve the permanent effect, tattoo ink is injected into the dermis, the deepest layer of the skin, and stays there for a lifetime. But over time, our cells, our macrophages, take up pigment and may transport them into the lymphatic system, in the lymph nodes. And this is a direct quote. This means that the tissue in the body can be exposed to potentially carcinogenic materials with tattoo ink. And that's coming from cancer.org, right? So they are essentially saying we don't know of any studies with a direct effect to cancer and tattoos, but we do know that the precedent is there with the ingredients and the mobilization of macrophages to the lymph nodes. Okay, so you got all these tattoos, now what the heck do you do? What do I do? Uh, well, don't get them lasered out, right? Because if you remove them, you're going to break and liberate more ink through the body, and you're gonna activate a lot of processes in the body. It's there, the decision's been made, it's okay, you didn't know, I wish I knew, but it's okay. If you have multiple tattoos, then you have to do more and more. The more surface area that's covered, you have to do more and more. So number one, daily movement, you gotta sweat, you gotta move the body, you gotta move the blood, the lymph, and detox. Number, number one, 
Then you gotta support your most important organ for detoxification in the body, your liver, right? You're gonna help your liver with exercise, as I just mentioned, right? That's gonna bring blood to the body, reduce fatty liver. Nutrition, reduce sugars, reduce trans fat, processed foods, genetically modified foods. We know that glyphosate, as I've just been talking about a lot lately. Choosing organic foods. What about foods that you need to be eating? High citrus foods, vitamin C, quercetin, cruciferous vegetables, right? You gotta be having these foods to make sure they're supporting your detoxification process. Green teas have been shown to support the liver, so whether you're drinking green tea or matcha, it's a high antioxidant liquid that you're going to be drinking to help negate those free radicals that are going to affect, inevitably, at some point, cause damage to your DNA. Whether the question is whether your DNA is going to recover from that damage or at some point as you get older, that DNA is irreversibly damaged. Berries, 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 a lot of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals to help support detox and protect. Eat three to four servings of berries per week has been shown to be protective to the liver. The same goes with grapes, leafy greens, really important, dense blood cleansing chlorophyll is in there. You want to have, it provides you amazing minerals, things like cilantro, spinach, whatever you're eating. And my favorite, for liver support, uh, and it kind of looks like the liver, especially in color, is beets, and that's beet juice. So you can eat beets or make beet juice, especially if you have tattoos, beets are your friend, right? You gotta dance to the beat of the beet if you got tattoos, 100%. They contain beta lanes. This gives it the red color, but it's therapeutic and protecting the liver. Also, lots of ginger and artichokes. Cruciferous vegetables, as I mentioned, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels, kale. Uh, sulfur-rich vegetables, make sure you're using mustard seed if you're cooking them to help replenish all of those enzymes to give you those nutritious or beneficial therapeutic constituents for the liver. Horseradish, garlic, broccoli, as I mentioned. Uh, healthy oils, make sure you're balancing the omega-3 and omega-6 ratio in your body. So staying away from high omega-6 foods like processed foods and making sure that you're eating good high omega-3 foods if you eat fish, then fish, or oils, nuts, and seeds. And lastly, if you drink coffee, get a good quality coffee. Really good one. I've done a coffee review. I've talked about all the best ones. And those are going to give you enzymes to detoxify and decrease inflammation in the body and going to give you a lot of good antioxidants. But remember the quality. And lastly, fiber, fiber, fiber. You want to make sure you're detox and pooping aside from everything. Even though a lot of these tattoo chemicals are coming out through the urine, make sure that you're uh, pooping regularly. Herbal teas, detox tea formulations. Uh, I like traditional medicinals, yogi, puka, gaia, peak, encha. Dandelion, burdock root blends. That's for blood purification, liver restoration, milk thistle, as you may know. Uh, amazing tea and supplement for liver rejuvenation and detoxification, kidney support. Turmeric, if you ain't using the spice, you gotta get on it, especially in your meals every day. It's not only important for bile production, but reducing inflammation in the body. It's an antioxidant, it's an anti-cancer, gonna help support your liver. So if you wanna take supplements to support your liver, go talk to your doctor, first and foremost, to go over any indications or interactions that it may have. Glutathione is a master detoxicant in the body. You can take this liposomally as a spray or liquid. You wanna take mineral drops in your water. Minerals are gonna be really important at detoxifying each phase in the liver. It's utilizing minerals and vitamins. Herbs, burdock, milk thistle, mushrooms, berberine, uva ursi, turmeric, as I just mentioned. And a lot of these toxins are coming out through the urine. So make sure that you're flushing out your urine, making sure you're drinking a lot of water, mineral-rich water, every single day, and supporting your kidney. And if you have a lot of tattoos, and you want to see what your heavy metal load looks like or toxic load looks like, hook up with a naturopathic or functional doctor. They'll be able to do a provoked uh, urine heavy metal test and just an overall toxin test for you to really give you an idea of where you stand as you support your body if you got your tattoos. Remember, tattoos are expression, tattoos are wonderful, but you ain't had all of the information. You didn't have the informed consent. This is what I'm giving you. So before you get a tattoo, take all of this into consideration. If you have tattoos, now you got a protocol to follow from now on. Hope you really enjoyed that. That is the Tattoo Knowledge Bomb. Thank you for listening as always, and it's been a pleasure to give you this wonderful tattoo information. And that was an incredible show. I'm telling you, Lauren is the guru of fascia, and I hope you learned a lot because I did. Learning about fascia and how intricate and incredible it is in the body, what it does, even more than science understands, and hearing her talk about it was just incredible. Thank you all for listening. Listen, rate, review, subscribe. Support the show if it really has touched you in a deep way, touched your heart, touched anyone in your life's heart. It really supports the show. It helps us grow. 
Thank you, and I'll see you next week.